Thanks for staying with us. We're still reviewing Punch. So I have the, yes, I have the human interest. Um, so uh, a, a businessman known as AGK Conversion he was kidnapped at his Ladipos Pepper Market on Saturday night. He was there taking inventory of goods that had just arrived around 12 a.m. And some armed men came in, attacked him, and um, all his workers left, and he was kidnapped. And also, the trader mem and members of the Board of Trustees of the market have um, confirmed that he, has, he was abducted and kidnapped from the market. Of course, this will make headlines in the sun, and they're demanding... Another person was kidnapped, whose name I'm trying to get, and they're demanding 500 million Naira ransom from you know the government. The punch says that kidnapping has come to Lagos now and that is popular, is being recorded in the mainland, yes. in Alimosho, in Amodofi. Yep. Is now, you know, <coughs> before we used to think kidnapping it was outside Lagos, but now it's here and we are sadly facing this. There's a new commissioner of police in Lagos, um, Fayo Ade, uh, Adegoke, and he's going to, of course, be faced with this new yeah, event that are coming up. Okay, so the minister... Uh, of Steel Development, Abu Bakr Aldo was at the um, National Assembly yesterday defending his budget. And he was specifically talking about the $496 million settlement that was paid to an Indian company. So what yeah. happened was that um, the Indian company was given the uh, concession to um, get iron ore from the Itakwe, um, um, Itakwe Iron Ore Company. Um, unfortunately, instead of them to be providing that oil, iron ore to Ajaokuta steel for processing, they were exporting. Oh my God. They were exporting it. Now, of course, federal government shut it down. So 2016 to 2019, federal government shut them down and took them to court. Now, because federal government canceled their agreement, we still need to pay for damages of $496 million. So um, he, was just, he, was, he was just talking, he was just, um, he had to pay. And so they, are, well, they, they, they already got their own judgment. Mm. However, the, the, the more important thing is that he had to go defend his budget because obviously that was part of what he needed to um, replace. Um, Aldo's submission, uh, one of the things he said that really infuriated one of the law chemicals is that they were still paying 1.5 billion naira salaries to a company that was not, um, they, were, they, they, were, they were actually not, they were not producing any iron ore and they were still paying okay. companies. So, so I think it was um, one of the lawmakers, I'm trying to see who it was, Akoti Uduahon, Mr. Natasha. She, she was furious, like, why are you still paying? She's from she, Kogi. She's from Kogi. She's right yeah. there with the... Uh, so she was really furious on her, but um, it is an interesting article to so just see how they're able to um, defend. Like so in dealing with the challenges within the aviation industry, 50 directors have been sacked, and EFCC has grilled the NCEE chiefs. So the president had on Wednesday sacked Mr. Kabir Mohammed of the Federal Airport Airport Authority of Nigeria, um, Mr. Taib Odunwo of the Nigerian Airspace Management Agency, Akinola Olateru of the Nigerian Safety Investigation Bureau, and Bureau, um, Professor Monsor Matazu of Nigerian Meteorological Agency <coughs> of Nigeria, as well as Akali Modibo, director of the Nigerian College of Aviation Technology, all taken out as well, followed by 50 directors taken out. He has appointed Mrs. Olubo Mekuku as a substantive yeah. Managing Director of FAN. Following all these appointments is to revamp the aviation industry. Um, Punch has revealed that 50 directors have been affected by this, and the statement was signed by the Head of Press for the Public Affairs of the Ministry of Aviation, and it's the, the, they said they should hand over to the most senior officers within the Aferius Directorate with mm. immediate effect. I'm looking forward. We, we knew when these appointments took place that there were going to be issues because the appointment happened very late in the last administration, and there were already aviation issues then. I'm, I'm, I'm really yeah. hoping that um, the <coughs> Minister for Aviation, Professor Skiamu, is up and doing and very active. We need more yeah. things to happen within that yeah. industry. It's not looking good right now. Daily Sun, 2024, INEC protests 4 billion Naira allocation, demands 89 billion Naira. Anxiety in South East over Kano as Supreme Court rules today. War without end in rivers. Shake up in aviation as FG Sachs directors. And misinflation, CBN predicts less revenues from oil in 2024. FIFA, FIFA places 11 Nigerian referees, 11 assistants on 2024 international list. And Borno Senate seat, six justices dragged to NJC over the alleged misconduct. Okay, which story? 
So um, yeah. I have a story here about customs. So the Controller General of the Nigerian Customs Service, Adewale Adini, uh, disclosed that 70% of the service's um, revenue comes from Lagos State. And according to him, the Lagos State government are planning new collaboration in order to enhance economic growth and prosperity of the entire country. He said this uh, yesterday in Lagos during the CGC 2023 conference with the theme leveraging data analytics for secure and efficient trade facilitation in customs operations and according to him he said Lagos houses 40 percent of the customs command in the country and Lagos houses um you know also contributing over 70 percent of their monthly revenue and it's not just a location on the map it's a cornerstone for nigeria's customs service uh, symbolizing the integral role in the economic narrative of our great nation so they are trying to see how they can work together with Lagos State since they are getting more from here. So it, it goes beyond just them, you know, patrolling and protecting our borders. But now they are getting into a form of business that will also help enhance the economy. I think it's a good one. So Borneo State is doing something that is very, a, a bit unusual. The Borneo Senate seat has led to six justices six justices being dragged to the NJC, that's the National Judicial Council, over allegations of misconduct. These justices were involved in the Senate's case. Um, the case was brought up by the ju Justice Uluka Yodiariwola, who doubles as the chairman of NJC, the petitioner, as well as Seshug um, Akume, a political and social analyst that alleged that the judges of the tribunal, as well as the tribunal, as those of the appellant courts, misconduct have arrived in a perverse judgment. So they are quoting the judgment that the tribunal came up with and the appeal court came up with, and they've taken the justices to the NJC. It's enough talk shop to say the judges have been are corrupted, but we must use the judiciary check system to checkmate what we think is wrong. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the judges defending themselves, the Court of Appeal judges, um, Biobale Abraham, Justice Biobale Abraham, Judge Will, Justice Folashade Ayodele Ujo, Justice Peter, to the Obiora, who have been alleged to have um, perversed judgment mm. in the appeal. And the, the kind of cases that they struck out and the kind of judgment they gave were questionable enough for them to take these six judges to court. I'm looking forward to how this plays out. Let's move on quickly. Um, Vanguard, various crisis assembly factions flex muscles. Patriotism will put Nigeria on right path, says Tinumbu. World Igbo Congress urges Supreme Court to free Namdekano unconditionally. How to reform Supreme Court, says Somolu. Ekiti bloody robbery, we have recovered, recovered three vehicles, says police. Inflation exchange rate to drop in 2024, says CBN. And aviation minister sacks all directors and, and others. Okay, uh, which story? I was going to take the anxiety has gripped southeast region. Our Supreme Court in Abuja today sets to deliver judgment on on um, the appeal seeking to compel the federal government to release the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, Mazen, Namdekano. Um, many of us are waiting for the judgment today. It's going to be, we'll see how that goes. But um, people are just hoping that he's freed. Many, many have come out, especially internationally, have come out to advise the Supreme Court to free him unconditionally because especially he, there's a court order um, saying so. So they need to uphold that judgment of the appeal court. Hopefully this will happen. Um, the Commissioner of Police for Ekiti State uh, uh, was speaking yesterday and he disclosed that the masterminds of the Wednesday robbery are presently being hunted down and that they've also recovered three vehicles and motorbikes used by them in this daredevil robbery that happened within the state. He okay. guaranteed that they would, push, they would find them no matter where they go. I'm hoping that they don't use this kind of thing to welcome the Deputy Governor mm. now that he's in office. Stress. Any other story in Vanguard? Um, so it says that in CBN has told the National Assembly that the soaring inflation and exchange rates would drastically decline in 2024. He was speaking yesterday when appearing before the um, Senator Tokumba Bureau APC led, um, APC Lagos East head, uh, says the led Senate Committee on Banking Insurance. He said that the total trade from Nigerian um, Forex um, market stood at 18.8 billion naira in the third quarter. Cardoso said that the outlook for the domestic economy remains positive and expected to maintain the positive trajectory for 2024. Uh, inflation pressures may persist in the short term, 
but it's expected to decline in 2024. Exchange rate pressures are also expected to reduce significantly with the smooth functioning of foreign exchange markets. We really hope that's true. <laughs> okay, that's all we can take on Front Page Review. When we come back, move on to our next segment. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.